Let me do it that way, that, that'll be better. Brilliant. Um, lovely to see you this morning. Um, let me just share my screen. And you will now see what we're talking about this morning. Um, you may already have known. We're talking about social media in lockdown. And that screen, you may look at that and think, oh yes, I know all of, about that. I know about Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, maybe other things as well. Um, and you might instantly think, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing with that. And then there might be some of you sitting there thinking, that's got nothing to do with me, I don't use it, I can now go and read the paper, this is nothing to do with me. Well, hang on in there, because whether or not you use social media, I'm hoping that there'll be some lessons that we can apply today as we think about how we use social media in lockdown. I'm, um, I use social media to a limited extent, but I'm probably not the most knowledgeable, I know I'm not the most knowledgeable person about social media. Um, so I did get some help from other people, uh, people who know a great deal more than me. And um, so we have a slightly different approach. We've got a couple of videos from uh, people who know more than I do about social media and how they've used it. Uh, and we're going to have a three part structure for those of you who like to know where we're heading. So part one is how do we use social media for good? Part two is how do we use social media for God? And part three is how can we... Um, minimize the negative impact of social media on us. So those are the three parts. And in each part, I'm going to ask us all to make some decision. Um, so there should be, you should find that you get to the end of this talk and you've got, made three decisions. You might even want to write them down so you remember what you think. Um, first question. Did you watch the pre-release video? I hope you did. Um, it came out on email earlier this week and uh, you will have heard Phoebe talking about using social media for good, for social justice purposes. Um, and then there was a bit on the end where Gemma and Josie talked about the negative impact of social media. If you haven't already watched it, I, I do recommend you go back and watch it. I really learned something from it. And she was talking about how she had used, um, she and others, in her involvement in a charity in Durham called Just Love Durham. It's not just a Durham thing, but um, they, they work for social justice. And she was talking about uh, recent work that they've been doing for the International Justice Mission, which mainly works against human trafficking and human slavery in some way all across the globe. And she also talked about the ethical handbook that she had been writing along with some others. Um, there was a link on Chris's email. Do go and read it. I really learned something from it. I was very impressed. I felt that I know so little about it and I read what she and other students had written and it was an eye-opener. So do go and do that. Um, I, I think sometimes, particularly as, I don't know, middle-aged people, we, we get a bit set in our ways and actually we should listen to people who uh, are maybe younger and wiser um, as well as older and wiser, but young people have something to teach us, don't they, about the way we shop and the way we um, choose what we buy, and the way we choose how we travel. Um, I, I was quite challenged by what she was saying and what that ethical handbook was saying to me. Here is a um, poem that is in the ethical handbook and it spoke to me, it's called Skirts, and I don't know who at Holly Poetry is, but I'm gonna read it to you. If the girl who made your skirts is not paid, you cannot say it's beautiful. If the pay is less than a living wage, you cannot say it's beautiful. If the colored dyes now lie in rivers, poisoned fish, polluted waters, if there is not sick pay, no toilet breaks, if the factories are in decay, no matter what your mirror says or how stylish you might look today, you cannot claim it's beautiful. I would like to say it's not just about skirts. So if all you chaps are sitting there thinking, don't buy skirts, not relevant. It's not just about skirts. It's about the way all of the shops, um, where, where do they get their stock? Who makes it? And here's a verse that it 
that came to mind as I read that. But he's already made it plain how to live, what to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbour. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. Take God seriously. And I chose the message version because uh, it came alive when I read it in that version. Phoebe's friend Judith wrote a little paragraph at the end of the ethical handbook and she said this, as Christians we're called to love our neighbours and this extends beyond our local communities and means loving our sisters and brothers globally. To actively love others requires supporting for them, standing for them and their rights and not supporting or partaking in industries that exploit and oppress them. Our consumer habits are entwined with a system of oppression in which we are the ones who benefit and therefore the power and responsibility is in our hands to create change. I found the ethical handbook, it was challenging, but it didn't, it didn't make me feel guilty. It was very kind in the way it was forcing me into um, thinking about my decisions. It was recognizing that we cannot all be perfect in the way that we consume and what we buy but we can all do small things. And if we all do small things, that is still an improvement. So, um, your first decision. What one thing can I do to improve the way I love my global neighbor? So that might be as simple as doing some research, go on the link and read the ethical handbook. Or do you already know how you ought to be buying things, but you find it difficult? Perhaps it's just too much to pay, which, you know, is, I recognise can be an issue for many people. Is it about the way we dispose of things, the way we recycle? Or do we actually know enough to be able to educate others? It's a quote from William Wilberforce. Um, see a, a force for um, global equality and um, anti-slavery saying you may choose to look the other way but you can never say again that you did not know. So I'm afraid having read that ethical handbook um, I know more than I did and I can make more informed decisions. So now that was part one. Now we're thinking about how we use social media for good. So part one, social media for good, sorry. Second part, how do we use social media for God? Um, and we're going to watch another video uh, by Josie and Gemma. Thank you, Josie and Gemma, you help us all. Um, talking about how they have been able to use social media for God. Shall I do it? Bear with me, we're going to do it this way. And have you got any advice for any of us who... There we go. Hello, Josie and Gemma, lovely to have you with us again. Um, I was going to talk to you about social media and how it's been affecting you in lockdown. So question number one, how have you used social media for good or for God during lockdown? So I don't know if you if people have watched them, but me and Josie did Babble on the Bed, which I think we did three videos just chatting about we picked a Bible verse or a topic and it was right at the start of lockdown just because we felt like we wanted to address some things and now was the time to do it um, and people were online all the time so we just we did that and I think we got a few responses and a few encouraging mes messages from that um, definitely mm. lot, yeah good things came from that mm -hmm. and I, always, I also um, kind of took over a little bit the youth account on Instagram and Facebook. So, um, yeah, on behalf of the HHPC youth team, kind of posted a few things on there, obviously advertised events and things, but that was a really great way to stay connected with the youth during lockdown, um, just to make sure that they know that we're still here and we still want to interact with them. Yeah, I've seen both of those things and I have been very impressed. I think it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, and have you had 
any feedback or any visible results from what you've been doing? Um, I think, yeah, people have been messaging more, I'd say, with questions, um, especially from a video that I did that was just kind of very plainly explaining a bit of the gospel. Um, a couple of my friends just messaged me saying that was actually really interesting and I want to know more, um, which is great. And um, one of my friends almost did an alpha course um, and then it fell through, but that was so encouraging. Um, and just seeing more of our friends even watch these videos, we're seeing numbers on like the videos grow and stuff. Um, not huge, but just, you know, more than would have otherwise. And so that's just encouraging to see that they've heard the message, they're seeing what we believe, um, and sometimes then taking a step to ask us more questions about it as well. Yeah. Mm, great. Um, when, you, when lockdown ends, whenever that will be, do you think it will change the way you use social media in any way? I, so I actually took a break. I took a month with no social media um, for a few different reasons, but I would say I'd do that again. I'd say take a break every so often actually, because there was a lot of negativity sometimes. So I think I would do that again. Um, just take a break out and just, you know, put my phone away for a lot longer in the day than I usually would. Uh, and that is always a good thing. I think I also would just continue to use it for my faith. I think I've upped that during lockdown, and so that's something I just want to keep doing as well. Just keep, um, yeah, sharing my faith online. I think that was a powerful thing. And have you got any advice for any of us who perhaps are beginners on social media? What, what would you, you know, if we want to be want to be evangelists on social media, what would you suggest to us? Um, yeah, I think it's such a good tool that we can use and I'd say go for it. Um, it's almost easier in a lot of ways than speaking to someone face to face because you just post it and you don't have to almost, you know, worry about their reaction straight away. Um, and so it's a great thing. Um, I would say just keep mindful of what you're posting and like everything that you share, everything that you comment on is making a statement um, and people see that. And so, yeah, keep just thinking and rethinking um, why am I posting this? Um, what is the purpose of this and what effect will it have? Um, and be personal as well. I find often it's easy to post on Facebook um, something that all our friends will see, but actually the more powerful things is when you message someone individually and keep connected with them and um, talk into their situation, you know, and know that, um, make sure they know that you're there and that you want to talk to them on a deeper level. Um, so I'd say message people individually. Thank you very much for all that lovely feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse and Gemma. Um, oh, sorry. I'm not going to run through everything they've just said to us. They've said it beautifully. Why should I repeat it? But when I listened to that again, I thought the things that these are the headings, I suppose, that came to my mind. Be bold. Stay connected. Be wise in what you post, who you speak to, who you, who you follow, when you use social media and when you don't, and be personal. Those are the things that I think uh, they were saying in that video. It made me think about Paul and the Corinthians. I've been reading about um, Paul and his relationship with the Corinthians. Uh, Corinth was a vast cultural melting pot. It was a very wealthy seaport. It was a business center. It was very important in the world then. And it was a worldly place full of idols. It had lots of religions and lots of religious discussion. It was fairly pagan. Um, and there was a lot of sexual freedom and also prostitution, uh, sexual slavery maybe, and a reputation for fierce independence. What does that remind you of? It reminds me of Britain in the 21st century. We're similar, aren't we? And Paul in Corinthians writes to correct several issues in the church where he'd spent 18 months setting up that church. Um, and yet somehow they had 
got led astray, they'd fallen apart a bit, they got into a bit of a mess in their church services and in the way that they viewed their leaders. But this is what he says to them. I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. Though I'm not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak. To win the weak, I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. I can't help thinking that if, uh, if social media had been available in Corinth, they'd have been using it, wouldn't they? They were a worldly connected, um, uh, I suppose, um, open to anything sort of bunch, a bit like us maybe. And therefore, when, when Paul says, by all possible means, I can't help thinking that if social media had been available to Paul, he would have used it. He'd have been on there uh, making the most of it. Um, we know this when he talks about um, people's unknown God and he says, ah, oh, you have an unknown God. Let me tell you about the God that I do know. So he began wherever they were and whatever they were doing, he capitalized on that to, as a launch pad for spreading the gospel. So it made me think, how can we use where we are and what we have in order to spread the good news, to use social media for God? What one thing can I do to improve the way I preach the gospel? What means do you have for spreading that good news? Well, if you're on social media, you might want to think about how you improve that online. How can you spread God's word more easily online? How can you um, bring your faith perspective to bear on people's situations? But if you're not on social media, there's still ways that you can think about it. Are you in a book group? What about at work? What about with your family and friends? Your housemates? At your school or college or hall of residence? as well as social media. So that's decision number two. How can you use social media or indeed wherever you are for God? And how can you declare it fearlessly, which was Paul's prayer in Ephesians. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, the gospel, as I should. Third part and final part. How do we avoid the negative impact of social media? We're going to watch a very short video where Phoebe talks about that aspect. You can see it. Well, I can't hear anything. The issues, temptations, negative impact of social media. I think over lockdown it's because I haven't got anything else to do I've just been spending a lot of time on it which is really good and you can learn a lot from it but it also is so exhausting and there's definitely a temptation to compare yourself to other people um, I know myself I've really struggled with seeing how how other people have used their time to learn a new skill or have joined a course that I didn't know about that I would really like to get involved in and then I've been really upset with myself for not being the same as them um, so it's definitely there's definitely a temptation to um, fall into the comparison trap and, um, and to base your entire worth on your productivity. Mm. So what advice would you give to someone to prevent the negative side of social media? I think it's good to set boundaries for your use of it. Um, as I've said, it's really good to use it for activism and learning, but there's also plenty you can learn without having to look at other people's um, lives online um there are lots of articles you can read um books you can read tv shows you can watch that don't require you to compare yourself to other people and to constantly be feeding into the um social media trap that is comparison and productivity so lovely thank you very much Oh. 
I found it really interesting um, watching that. And then also if you watch the pre-release video that Chris shared earlier this week, when Josie and Gemma also talked about the negative impact of social media on them, um, it was interesting. There were very common themes that they mentioned and that Phoebe mentioned and that I would say too. And the things that all three of them were suggesting as, as ways in which we can mitigate those negative impacts was, were these three things. This is my summary of what I think they said. Um, setting boundaries, putting the phone away, leaving the phone outside your, your room at night maybe. Um, amount of, it's easy to, to time waste, isn't it? Um, and to do something, you know, look at dog videos or um, things that really don't have much value. Or even things that not don't have value but are positively harmful to you. Are there way, things that trigger you that give you anxiety? Gemma talked about needing to take a break because there was so much negativity on social media. And so setting boundaries and being self-controlled, putting phones away or having a little holiday from social media um, are all important things. But the, the thing that really struck me was this comparison thing which I feel too, when I look at uh, some of the posts that perhaps um, I see on Edu Twitter about people saying, oh, I've, I've planned all my lessons now up to half term. And I think, oh, well, I haven't. And then you start worrying that you're not doing the right thing and not using your time in the way that you should, and you're not doing it as well as others. Well, Paul would have understood that. Um, in Corinthians, in Corinth, um, people were comparing Paul. So not only might Paul have been looking at other people comparing himself, but actually people were doing that and saying to him, actually, Paul, you're not as good as other people. He was facing criticism about his authority. They were telling him he was weak, that his speaking was unimpressive compared to other people. Um, he was criticized and came off worse in comparison. <coughs> Sorry, the screen's not doing as it should. There we go. This is what he said in, in response. You are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they're not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond proper limits, but will confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us, a sphere that also includes you. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. So his solution to being compared was this. He didn't bother defending himself and nor did he boast. He didn't compare himself and then think, oh no, it's all right, I'm better than them. Nor did he think, oh, Actually, I am worse than them. He, he just didn't do the comparison at all. He was so secure in God's commendation and belonging to God and doing what God had asked him to do that actually comparing himself to what God had asked others to do was an irrelevant, unwise thing to do. So, final slide. Final decision. What one thing can I do to reduce the negative impact of social media. Here are some suggestions. Be humble. Do I need to be more humble? Do I need to be very careful what I say about what I've been doing so that it doesn't upset others? Can I impose boundaries? Do I need to unfollow a few people? Are there apps I need to delete from my phone? Here are the words of Paul in Philippians. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So, hopefully three decisions that you've made how you can improve your use of social media 
or other places where you're at for good, for God, and to minimise the negative impact of what you view. Maybe that's on telly or on the internet, if not social media. Our final song puts our view back on Jesus, gets our perspective right, talks about following him rather than anything else, and putting our gaze back on him as his gaze is on us. Let's sing together. <laughs>